Hey coders, how's it going? Chris here, and in today's parse lesson, we're going to look at retrieving objects. In the previous lesson, we saved a bunch of objects into our parse uh, backend. So let me show you what we did. Parse demo in the browser under the contact store, we have two rows. So today we're going to retrieve this data in our Xcode app. So let's go ahead and open up our app and make sure that you open up the XC workspace file instead of the Xcode proj because we are using CocoaPods. And while that loads up, this is a handy documentation to have, like I mentioned in the last episode. All you need to do is go to parse.com slash docs, and from there you're going to be able to choose guide under iOS, and you're gonna come here, where you can look at how to do saving, retrieving, and all the stuff we're talking about in these lessons. So here we are, we have our Xcode project open. I'm gonna visit the view controller, and this is the same project that we worked on yesterday. I'm not going to create a new one and integrate the library all over again. Instead, I'm going to just delete this stuff right here, uh, and I'm going to work on retrieving the data. So retrieving data from parse revolves around the PF query class. Okay, so let us create a brand new query. Let query equals PF query. And here you can pass in a class name to initialize the query. We're going to pass in contact because that is, if we go back to the parse dashboard, that's the class name that we saved this data under. So let's go back here. And now I'm gonna show you how to retrieve a object from parse if you know the object ID. Remember yesterday when we saved these two rows of data, it auto-generated this object ID. So let me just copy this one for Tommy and let's retrieve it based on that ID. Now chances are you won't know the ID unless you've kept track of it somewhere in your code, but I'm gonna show you how to retrieve all of the rows in that store in a little while. So here we're gonna type query dot and we can call a method called get object in background with ID. So we're gonna choose this one right here which allows us to specify a block of code for what happens when uh, the object is returned. So here we pass in the object ID, that's this one. And for this block, I'm going to double click it to open that block of code. And remember when I said that, and remember when I said that data in parse revolves around PF objects, and we created PF objects to save to parse. So when we retrieve that data back, it comes back as a PF object as well. And I'll show you how to access the columns of data from that PF object. So here, notice that it is an optional type, so it could be nil if it can't find any object with this ID. So I'm just gonna call it the, let's say the object. That's the parameter I'm using. And let's call this the error. And here in the code, we're going to check first, after it's retrieved the object, was it successful? So here we gotta check if the object is not equal to nil and the error is equal to nil because we don't want there to be something in the error parameter. If there is, that means there was an error message. And here we're checking that the object is not nil, so meaning to say that there is an object returned. Then we can print the object, else some error happened, and then you can print the error. Here I'm going to say successfully retrieved object. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just set a breakpoint here and I'm going to run the app. And hopefully it goes and retrieves the contact object with this ID. Okay, so it stopped at our breakpoint line, which is great because that means it successfully retrieved an object, it's not nil, and there is no error. So let's, in the console here, let's go PO object and see what we get. So as you can see in the console window here, we've got our PF object with all of the properties or the key value pairs that we saved it with. So first name is Tommy, last name is Smith, email is that. And in order to print out specific data, let's say you've got your object returned and you wanna access the first name. Well, it's kind of like a dictionary. You just pass in the key like that. So we're gonna print the guy's first name. However, it doesn't know what type of data the value is, so we can cast it as a string like that because we know that the first name is of a string type. So let's run it again. Okay, so we've got an error here. Remember that object is an optional type, so we have to unwrap it first. So let's add an exclamation mark there to unwrap 
the object and get the dictionary and then we pass in the key to retrieve the value but the value needs to be cast as a string like that so now we will be able to run it and you can see here in the console that it printed out the first name okay so now what if you weren't able to get the object id but you want to retrieve all of the data so let me just comment this out and we'll perform another query so let query equals pf query class name contact and then we're going to say query dot find objects so before because we knew what the object id was we used get object but here when we want to retrieve all of the rows we used find objects so we're going to use this one find objects in background with block because this one has a lets you specify a block of code to execute when the uh, the fetch returns so let's open up the block of code and it has two parameters notice that this time it has it's still optional so it could be nil it could return no objects but this time it's an array of pf objects so you can see those square brackets there and we've got the error parameter again so let's give these parameters some names i'm going to call this objects and in the code we're going to say uh, let's check if the error is there's nothing in there first so meaning that there was no error in the fetch and next we're going to check if there are objects this time let's use optional binding so if let returned objects equals objects and in here objects array isn't nil let's loop through the array to get each object so let's use a for loop here. So for object in return to objects, we're going to print out the first name. So print object first name, and we're going to cast it as a string. So we're going to print out that first name. There's a difference this time. Up here, the actual object was an optional type. So we needed to add this exclamation mark to unwrap that object because we have checked that it isn't nil. Here, it's the actual array that we're checking. It's the PF objects array. And so we've determined that that isn't nil. So inside that array, we have all of the PF objects. Okay, so let's give this a run. So here in the console, you can see that John was printed and Tommy was printed. So that's great. We've learned how to retrieve a specific object with the ID, and we've learned to retrieve all of the objects just using a basic query like this. Now you can see how this might be a problem if you had a ton of contacts, especially if let's say your app was used by multiple users and each user had their own set of contacts. If you did a query like this, it would literally just return all of the contacts in that store, whether it belonged to this user or belonged to another user. So this query, this PF query actually has a lot more features you can do to limit and constrain the query that you're performing. So you can say stuff like return only the contacts with first name starting with T or, you know, add some more parameters to the query. So you're making a more specific query uh, and you can do sorting and you can do limit, you know, the first 10 results uh, and stuff like that. So the PF query is quite powerful and we're going to learn in a couple of lessons later uh, how to form more complicated queries. But in today's lesson, the focus was just to get the data out of the parse backend, show you guys how that works and then how to access the data in the PF object that is returned. So I hope you guys learned something new. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like and subscribe. If you haven't, please share it with your friends and colleagues. That helps me out a ton. So thank you so much and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye.